Hello, I'm JW, and this time I'm going to have a look at neutrals. Now, there's been a lot of comments and various questions on many videos in the past, all of which uh, basically relate to the same thing, as in what actually is a neutral, why don't you get a shock when you touch the neutral, and of course uh, what actually neutrals for, and all this other thing, and where they connect to the transformer, and so on. So we're going to cover that in this particular video. And uh, no, this is only for the UK, of course other countries have different wiring arrangements, so of course if you happen to have any of those then this video does not apply. But the general principles are of course the same pretty much anywhere, but to say do bear in mind that uh, different arrangements do exist. Now in most cases if you want to find out what something is you can have a look in the wiring regulations, this is the uh, version we're currently using, and uh, in the definitions part, which is uh, part two, there's definitions for all kinds of stuff. And if I have a look inside, then sure enough there is one here for neutral conductor, but unfortunately it's uh, somewhat unhelpful because it's basically a conductor connected to the neutral point of a system, and so on. And basically any definition that uses the actual word as part of its own definition is of course a huge fail. And if you want to find out what neutral point is, well you note that there is no definition for neutral point because here we have uh, the previous ones is motor caravan, and then we're moving straight on to nominal and non-flame. So... Uh, this definition, unfortunately, is a pile of rubbish, and uh, we're not going to be bothering with that. Now, instead of that useless definition, which kind of uses its own definition to define itself, what we're going to use is this uh, diagram instead. So, in the UK, and in fact most other countries, the power that comes into your house, or your business, or wherever else you are, it's going to be coming from a transformer of some sort. And a transformer is just two uh, coils of wire, one side there, and there's some kind of core in the middle, typically iron or something similar. And then on the other side you have another coil of wire. And there's no connection between the two. It's just a big electromagnet here and a big electromagnet there. So one actually uh, induces power in the other one. So no uh, electrical connection. And on the uh, high voltage side, typically in the UK it's going to be in the region of 11,000 volts. Pretty useless for your house. And then on the other side it will be something like... 230. So of course normally uh, what your appliances would use. So what we've got here is two wires with 230 volts between them. If you grab hold of both wires then you're going to get a shock. But crucially in this state if you grab hold of one of them you don't get a shock and if you grab hold of the other one you don't get a shock either because what we've got here is essentially an isolating transformer and you can actually buy those for use in various situations. However the uh, electricity system in the country is not an isolated arrangement. It's one which is referenced to ground, and by ground we're talking about the actual ground or the soil or whatever outside your house. So uh, here's the uh, soil outside your house, and it's uh, in green in this particular case. And all that's done at the transformer is that an earth rod or something similar is shoved into the ground. So uh, there it is. And then one of these is connected to it. So we'll just say it was this one because it's easier to draw in. And there's a solid wire put between the two. Now because the two here are connected together with a piece of wire, the voltage between here and here is pretty much going to be zero, simply because they're connected together, so whatever voltage it may have, they're going to be the same. So there's no difference in voltage between the two there. But of course we've still got a difference of 230 volts between here and here, and this also means now we've got a difference of 230 volts between here and the actual ground itself. Now once they get into this state, these are simply given the labels of a neutral. And then the one up here, of course, is the line like that. So if you were going to stand on the ground here and grab hold of what's labelled up as the neutral, then you're not going to get a shock from it, simply because there's no difference in voltage between the two. But of course they're connected together. But of course if you stand on the ground here and grab hold of this one, then you definitely will get a shock. Of course that 230 volts is between the two. So that is no different really from just grabbing hold of the two wires. It's just that you've now extended this, uh, what we're now calling a neutral wire, to also include most of the ground as well. Now when the wires actually come into your house, of course they're going to be connected to some kind of equipment. So uh, we can just draw this along here. And we'll just draw this as, a say, a heating element of some kind. Like that. And then our neutral of course connect to the other side of that. Now a heating element uh, has some kind of resistance and in this case we'll say that that is say about 20 ohms. That would make it approximately a 3 kilowatt heater. 
So in this configuration then the current will just flow through the heating element and of course it will heat up and of course do what it's supposed to do. No particular surprise there. But what are the voltages in this uh, particular system? Now if you were to stand on the ground here again and grab hold of what we're now calling the neutral then you won't get a shock because as we see here it's still connected to the actual ground here so the voltage difference here is effectively going to be the same as before so there's no real difference in voltage between this neutral wire and the ground. But again if you grab hold of the uh, line wire here again you've got that 230 volts up here so you will actually get a shock. So how is it that the line is suddenly converting to a neutral and uh, what's going on in the heating element? And the answer is of course really simple. It's the fact that the heating element has a fairly large resistance compared to the resistance of the wires. Now in a lot of these drawings the wires are considered to have no resistance. Of course that's not really true because all wires have some kind of resistance. But for practical purposes the resistance of the wires is so small that it's insignificant compared to the actual resistance of the heater. And you might measure these and you might find that they're sort of 0.01 ohms or something like that. And it would be the same up here. And in a circuit the voltage is shared among the various resistances that you've got. So where you have a large resistance most of the voltage is going to appear across the large resistance there. So in this case it'll be the heater. There's going to be a tiny voltage appears across the wires from here to here. But because it's such a tiny resistance you might say it's sort of half a volt or something ridiculous like that. And again sort of half a volt there maybe on those wires. And because bulk of the resistance is here what we're going to get across these ones is effectively going to be the full voltage or maybe slightly less so it might sort of be uh, 229 or something in this case. So this is only a neutral for the fact that it's connected back to here with a very low resistance as in a solid copper wire. This is also the line because it's connected back to that again with a very low resistance and then the voltage is basically lost across here. If you were to measure in the middle of the heating element which of course you wouldn't normally do then you would find that there was actually half the voltage there. So you would have uh, say 229 across the whole thing and if you measure in the middle there then you would find there's probably about sort of 115 or something in the middle. And again if you measured sort of a quarter there you'd have a quarter of it and so on. So it's purely the fact that the resistance is then making this part the neutral. Now if you grab hold of that you're not going to get a shock but there is something to be aware of here that this is only the neutral when it's actually connected back to this position here because of course that's how it's getting the same voltage or the same potential as the ground. If this became broken or damaged for some reason like that now these resistances still apply but there's no connection back to this here so this and this are not going to be the same voltage because of course they're no longer connected together and what you will find that the voltage here is no longer going to be divided in this way because though we've got a small resistance here, a moderately large resistance here and a small one here, this gap basically has almost infinite resistance because it's completely open. I remember what we said before in any particular circuit wherever you've got the largest resistance is where the large part of the voltage will appear. So we've now gone from having 20 ohms being the largest part to this whole lot only adding up to about 20 and then in this big gap here we've basically got either infinite resistance or in the region of probably many gig ohms because it's just a basically open circuit. So most of the voltage will then appear across this gap so this will be the zero and then this is going to be basically the 230. So if you grab hold of this part then you're connecting yourself to the 230 volts you will definitely get a shock from that. So it's only the neutral and it's only safe when it's connected to the actual uh, wiring or the transformer connection here. And of course if you open the circuit and disconnect it then it's not a neutral anymore and it's going to have a dangerous voltage appearing on there. And conversely if you then uh, reconnected it back over here you've now got most of the resistance goes back here so and then the voltage will show up across this. And this again will be pretty much zero or the same potential as the ground. Now if the line became disconnected, say like this, and there was some failure there, again the circuit has now changed to have a huge resistance here and of course uh, pretty much a uh, tiny resistance to this. And what would actually happen in this case is that because the largest resistance is now here, again where the air gap is, giga ohms or whatever, then you're going to get most of the voltage, in fact only all of it, across this gap. 
So then this will have 230 volts on it. This is going to be basically zero, simply the fact that uh, this huge gap is the biggest resistance. All of this, although it's say 20 odd ohms, the actual resistance of this compared to that is tiny. So again, all of this will then effectively become part of the neutral. And therefore you will get up hold of this when it's not connected, then you won't get a shock. And this should be fairly obvious this way around because obviously it's not connected to the actual 230 volts. So all of this will basically be at the same potential as the ground down here. And again, that only applies once the uh, thing is actually disconnected. If it was then reconnected, voltage shifts to across this item. And again, the uh, actual voltages of these compared to the ground is completely different. Now that's how it's done on the single phase system. And you don't see single phase transformers that often. They're typically only in rural areas or for very small installations. Most of them are actually a three phase transformer. Now the differences aren't particularly major. The only difference really is in a three phase transformer you've got three sets of windings. So uh, we can just draw those uh, in here. So here's one of them. And then we'll draw another one over here. And then we can draw the other one over there. And just as in the uh, other one, there's going to be another set of three windings on the high voltage side, say the 11,000 volts or whatever it happens to be, and then these are all 230 volts each. So in this particular state, if you measure between the ends of here and here, you get 230, here and here you get 230, and also 230 over there as well. And the way the neutral is derived on these is rather than doing a separate one for each of the three, the ends of three of these are all joined together, like that. And then this point here is what we're going to be calling the neutral, and then that is what goes down into the actual ground, and that's where your actual ground or soil or whatever would be located. And then what you get from the end of these are your three phases or the three lines, so one there, one here, and then of course the other one like that. So we can call those one, two, and three. And then the neutral connection is taken from the central point here, so you just take that out of there, and then that is your neutral, should you absolutely need such an item. So if you would stand on the ground here and grab hold of the neutral, then you will not get a shock because being it's connected straight back to this central point, and that's connected to the actual ground or the earth back here. So the voltage between this and this is basically going to be zero, no shock involved. But just as with a single phase one, if you connect between the actual ground here and the, say, L3 here, then there's 230 volts there, so you will definitely get a shock. And the same between L2 and the ground, and the same between L1 and the ground. So all of these are at 230 volts with respect to the ground and the neutral. Of course, the neutral and the ground are the same voltage. Now, for reasons we're not going to cover in this video, although you would have, say, 230 volts there, if you go between any two of the phases, say between uh, here and there, then you actually get 400. And again, if you go between here and here, well, guess what? That's 400 as well. And if you went between, say, the top here and the top there, then yes, that's also 400. And the reason for this is because these phases are not actually all the same. They're all shifted out of phase somewhat, so you get a high voltage between each of those two. So we'll cover that in another video. But in terms of the actual neutral, it's the same arrangement. It's at the same voltage as the ground, simply because we've chosen to connect that particular point of the system to the actual ground itself. And as long as it remains connected, then the voltage between the neutral and the actual ground itself will effectively be zero most of the time. But as before, this becomes damaged or broken, then this part here is definitely not safe because it's going to be connected through various other parts of the system and you're going to get dangerous voltages appearing there. So that's a look there at the neutral. Neutral being simply a wire we have chosen to connect to the ground at a suitable point, typically in the transformer, although there are other options. And it has a similar voltage to the ground, so therefore if you're standing on the ground and grab hold of the neutral, there's generally no shock involved because there's no difference in voltage. But of course neutral is only a neutral while it is connected. If that becomes disconnected for whatever reason and the end is still then connected to the rest of the circuit, it's definitely not a neutral anymore. It's just a flapping end of some live circuit. Dangerous voltages are likely to appear. And this is worth remembering when you're disconnecting wires. If you're going to test the wires, say, in a junction box first, the ones that are neutral are going to have no voltage relevant to ground. 
Of course, when you disconnect them, if there's some energization on the rest of the system, then a voltage can appear there as soon as it's disconnected. So if you're going to do that, always test the wires after you've disconnected them as well, just to make sure there wasn't some kind of power being applied elsewhere. Now that's all for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.